Hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm Jay from Video Shelter. Today we are going to create this awesome gold coin effect in Photoshop. All right. So we'll be creating this uh, gold coin effect in Photoshop. Let's get started. So I'll be making a new document by pressing Ctrl N, Command N on the Mac. And I'll be keeping the uh, width of 1500 pixels and height of 1500 pixels and resolution 72. I'll name it as gold coin. All right. So I'm keeping the background transparent. So here are the rulers. All right. If you if you do not see the rulers, go to view, enable the rulers and snap as well because we have to snap the rulers horizontally and vertically both. All right, so I'll drag the ruler here and I'll place it in the center. If you have your snap on, it will automatically slap, snap in the center. And same for the vertical here. All right. So what I will do is I'll be using shape uh, layer for this thing. I'll go to shape layer and select the ellipse tool. Make sure your shape is selected here. By clicking shift and alt, you'll get the proper round circle here. I'll be making it quite big. And this property box will open here we don't we'll be needing a fill for this so i'll choose a gray color fill and i don't want any uh, stroke for this thing so i'll be keeping the stroke off All right so this is the base of our coin so we'll name it as base coin so what i will do is we will be using a lot of layers here so i'll be dragging out my layer panel out here so that way it's going to be very easy for me all right so this is the base layer, so we'll be using the uh, using this thing for selections mainly. So I'll just Control J and Command J if you're on Mac. I'll rename it to Coin, all right. And this is going to be the main coin. This is going to be the base. So we'll be using you know the base coin basically just for the you know, selections of shapes and everything. All right. So what I will do is I'll I'll double click on the layer here and it will open my layer style panel here. So I'll just use a, use a gradient overlay. Here. Click on the gradient overlay, select this, and I'll be, you know, just to you guys to work along with me, I'll just set it to default. And then I'll just click on this and I'll be using this gradient here. And click OK. Then I can, with my move tool selected here, I can drag the uh, gradient up and down. So I'll be using the angle of 127 because I want my light source to come from this side of the coin. So you can make it according to your choice, all right? That's that's okay for now. So I'll click OK and I'll be back here. So this is the uh, main shape of the coin, okay? So obviously, if uh, I don't know where 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 you are right now, anywhere in the world, coin is just not this plain. So there's always a texture on the coin. So we'll be creating a fake texture here. Before that, I'll just create a new layer. Alt, sorry, Control Shift N. Command Shift N if you're on Mac and rename it as texture. Hit OK. So what I will do is I'll can I will just fill this layer with my back foreground color, which is already selected here. I'll go to my filters, noise, add noise. 63 is the amount which I figured out is going to be very accurate for this thing. So I'll fill the value of 63 here. Click OK. Go to filter again, blur. Uh, normal, normal blur here just to blur it out a little more go to filter again stylize and boss I have figured out these values you can just copy the exact same values if you want to and click ok so this is quite harsh texture if I if I just zoom in here by command plus sign here or con control and if you see it's quite harsh here so I'll just go back and I'll keep the opacity of somewhere around 30 I guess 30 is fine okay. so what I will do is I'll just hold my control and come on the thumbnail of the base coin and that way I have selected the you know, selection of this coin clicking clicking on my texture layer click on the mask down here and I flip the mask so only this in, internal area of, of this coin has been textured and everything out, outside this it's, it's gone okay. so what I will do is I'll click hold uh, shift on my keyboard and click on the coin layer and 
group it. So this way it's going to be our base main code sorry. So what I will do is I'll just create an outer ring for this coin and inner ring. How we're gonna do this is like selecting somewhere out here, selecting the uh, shape player uh, shape tool again, ellipse, make sure you're on shape and from the center by holding shift and hold just drag it out. For, more, for your more convenient, what we can do is, I just go back and delete this thing. We can just cop, uh, copy this layer by Ctrl J. Bring it over the main, on the top, right? And selecting this layer, I'll go to my shape mask, again shape layer. Uh, ellipse tool is selected there. And make sure you're on shape again. And on this panel, it should be selected as subtract from shape. Or either you can just hold Alt on your keyboard and it will show the minus sign. So what I will do is I'll drag here by holding shift and alt on my keyboard. This is the outer ring which, which will be you know, used for this coin. Let go. So you can see I have created an outer ring for this thing but it looks very flat. All right, it's, it's very very flat. So what I'll do is I'll be using blend shapes or layer style whatever you call it for this particular case. Double click on the layer. It will open a layer style panel here emboss bevel and emboss and i'll be selecting control this one. just to just you guys you know it's for you guys to you know just work along me i'll be setting my settings to default here so what i will do is it's going to be inner bevel smooth i'll be filling the value of 200 yes that's okay i'll, I'll be going to 25 here and direction is up if you go downward it will be you know the bevel will be going inside this thing so I'll be keeping up. I want this thing to come in outside the three coin, and the size will be somewhere around five. It's it's completely your choice. What kind of coin you're making, and what it's it's totally your personal preference. I'll be filling the value of seven. The softness is one, and I can always increase the highlight opacity here, and also the shadow opacity. It makes more realistic from the inside because obviously if light is coming from this end, it's, it's going to be very dark here because it, it's the embossed thing so light won't pass through it. Right. so that's the settings i'm going to use for this thing you can just copy and paste the same exact settings if you like hit ok and you'll be back to your layer panel again and now uh, i'll be creating the uh, inner circle for inner ring for this thing go back to your base coin again Control j and bring above the coin uh, outer ring. I'll just rename it, rename it just for the you know, organization purposes. Outer ring. So it's, it's the same for some reason. Ring. And I just control T, command T to end back, holding shift and hold. And I'll bring down the inner circle somewhere in this. This sounds, it's okay. Because I want my text to be coming around this area, so I, I want to maintain this space for my upper and lower text code. So make sure whenever you want to subtract or add from your shape layer, you have to select the shape layer. And if you just want to create a new shape layer, click somewhere out either here on the group or something, but not on the shape layer, in case you know you may not end up adding or subtracting in the layer. So I want to subtract from the layer as we done for the outer ring. So I'll be selecting my <coughs> inner circle ring go on my uh, shape tool again and ellipse selected make sure you don't subtract from font shape and same process scroll shift and all and that is the perfect size for my inner ring it's gone so what we can do is we can either we can go back and apply the same uh, layer style to this or whatever you, I hope you do, you guys are not doing this right uh, right clicking on this thing copy the style and then paste on that there's a very new cool trick I don't know you most of you guys will be aware of this so hold alt on your keyboard go to FX tab here click and drag on the other layer where you want to paste the exact same settings of your layer style let go so exact settings are copied on this thing but unfortunately there is no fill obviously i'll tell you one more thing all right this is this is a very cool trick when you're applying the uh, blending options make sure 
or you know you can just try it may fit your project it may not fit your project it's just a tick if you want to use you can go ahead and use this thing if you remove the fill to zero it's going to be a very good you know uh, the texture is going to be very good here because we'll be uh, there's no fill on this there, there are no pixels calculated from the actual shape here it's just the blend uh, blending options which are showing the effect here if i go back to my layer panel and switch off the emboss contouring here you'll see there's nothing because there's fill is totally off on this thing so this is all this information is coming just from the layer style right and i'll do the same for the inner ring as well let's go so what i'll do is for now i'll hide the inner ring so because we'll be creating some of the effects on the outer ring here so yeah so make sure you are you are not selecting any of your shape layer just group or anywhere outside you can click go to your shape layer again click polygon tool make sure your shading settings are 50 here and select on this settings tab here star and 99 person that's okay so you click from the center holding your shift and drag it outside make sure one of your uh, this ring is exactly in the center horizontally if you see here it's exactly in the center horizontally all right and what we can do is we can control j or command j if you want we can duplicate this ring here control t and when you select this from the corner it's going to show you this kind of icon here and holding your shift rotate 90 degrees you can see this small icon coming which shows how much degree i have rotated this thing so this 90 is perfectly fine for me for now if you select both the layers you'll see it's equally divided yeah. so what we will do is we'll control e to merge the layers right click on the layers the rasterize layers and so and now what we can do is we can apply stroke and other elements on this thing double click on the layer and i'll be using a stroke of size of three and color overlay of pure black and it's going to be outside all right click ok so what i will do is this i think this is perfect gap or if you want more tight you know endings over here you can just control j control t again and rotate somewhere in the between of this thing and it's going to be really cool again press enter to get out of the transformation shift click on the both the layers control e and it's merged it's just on the one layer now all right so what i will do is i'll hold my control key on the keyboard on the outer ring click on the thumbnail and you'll get the selection here by selecting the uh, this strings layer here i'll create a mask so it's just on the outer ring nowhere else all right so what i will do is i'll just hold control on my uh, sorry alt on my keyboard and drag the same settings to the string layer that's good you can see the black because we have to manually fill the zero for the uh, fill here but I don't, I don't want these strings to come or pop outside of the outside for the coin I just want to you know, want them to go inside so double click on the effects panel here sorry and select bevel and emboss and select down that's going to give you a very cool effect All right. just click ok the rest of the settings remain the same just click ok so now what I will do is I will bring the layer just above the outer ring collapse my fx panel over. shifting by holding shift and selecting the outer ring i'll just press ctrl g or command g if you're man and this is on one layer so i'll rename it as outer ring all right and now i'll highlight the o and hide this uh, the inner ring here so what i want i want small circles to be you know, calculated equal distance just across this circle inner ring so what i will do is if, without selecting the shape layer here selecting somewhere out i'll click and select the ellipse tool here i'll create a holding shift and alt i'll create a purple circle here All right and i want a fill of red color which you will be properly able to see All right i don't want any stroke for this thing Just click. what i will do is i'll press ctrl t zoom in a bit bring it exactly in the place here sorry bring 
bit here. It's quite big, so I'll just hold Shift and Alt. Just you know, make it small in a proportion. That's it. that's exactly in the center of the inner ring. I'll zoom back out. What I will do is I'll I'll just press Control T. Right click inside this. I'll choose Rotate by holding Alt on my keyboard. Now I'll drag the pivot point exactly in the center because I want my rotation to go from the center all across the inner ring. Zoom out. Now what I will do is I'll just rotate the circle by holding shift to exact 90 degree and now what I will do is press Control alt shift t and it will place my circle all across right so this is exactly 90 degree 90 degree 90 degree right? so now what I will do is I'll hold this thing Alright, so this is on the same way, right? So what we can do is we can click and select both three of these. Control J Command T rotate it 45 degree press center. Again select all the circle rays, control J command T. And you can repeat keep on repeating this process until unless you are satisfied. Control J selecting by selecting all this small circle layer. Control J Command T. And this time will go backward. So by this I created the dots in here. What we can do is if if you feel this everything is you know empty and you want more circles, you can select here. Select all my circle layer, control J command T and rotate it. Just eye it out. It's in the center of both the circles. Interest. Now, what I will do is I'll come up here, select the first layer, and go back down and select the last layer and control E. So it's all on one layer now. What I will do is I'll copy the same effect on this thing by holding Alt on my keyboard, dragging my effects and dropping on this. Thing. So it's, it's there. I'll go to my <coughs> layer style panel, pressing the control and i want this thing to go down right and i want color overlay as well because it's going to give me nice cool black shadows inside i will reduce the opacity to somewhere in 40s now still there is red color shown in uh, the inner circle small circle so I'll take out the fade to zero perfect it's looking cool it's trying it's getting to take shape now and this is going to be inner ring now what I will do is I'll hold this thing both the layers pressing ctrl G to put in a group and name it as inner ring so you have created a very cool effect by now you started from the normal ellipse shape and we have come all the way till here right. so now what I want is a text running all across this curvy text here and down also right so now what i will do is i'll go back to my ellipse uh, sorry shape tool selecting the ellipse this time i will make sure you are not on shape you're on path from the center holding your shift and hold make a circle somewhere here and now by selecting t you can type on this path when you when you hover over your mouse on this uh, shape here You'll see this icon. When you see this, click and you can type the text. I'll be typing video shelter. So it's not exactly in the center. So what we'll do is we'll select this path selection tool here. When you select this, you'll see a couple of points on your uh, this ring here. So you drag any of your point and take it to this side. Or you can go the other way around. Take this, take it to this side. Make sure you stretch it out. Right? So this is fine for me. If you want your text to look bigger, you can always double click on the text and go to the properties. And you can do all those changes you want here. So text is 100, I'll make it 120. I want it 
bit bigger and all those other things you want to do you can just show that and this is my video shelter text i want one more text to go around this so what i will do is i'll click somewhere out select my shape tool here ellipse tool again make sure you're on paths from the center again holding shift and alt create another circle just like this this time i want something to go totally outside because you will come to know me right so again selecting your text tool whenever you, when you come on this thing you'll have this icon click here and i'll be typing text of keep creating with us so now again selecting my path selection tool here i'll bring the text inside and in the center that's good i want my video shelter text to be bigger than this tagline here so what i will do is i'll double click on this keep creating with us and i'll put the value of 90 or somewhere around 100 that's perfectly fine you doesn't it does, does not matter what color you're using because eventually we're going to take out the fill from this so what i will do is i'll create i'll create a group for the text by holding shift and selecting both the text here press ctrl g or command g if you want that i'll be renaming it as text So now what I will do is I'll open my inner ring. The cool way, you know, this is the cool trick. And if someone, if any of you is using uh, CS6 or earlier version, you can apply the shape layer styles on the group as well. If you are using anything below CS6, you have to go back and apply text on, uh, you know, the same effects on every text layer because they do not give the opportunity or the liberty to uh, put the text or uh, the effects on the group itself so we can put the groups uh, effects on the group because i am using a latest version cc 2015 it's not latest but yeah above cs6 yeah? so holding the alt on your keyboard dragging the effect all the way on the group so it's on my group now all right so i'll be modifying some of the elements on this group before that i'll just take out the fill from my text yeah? so i'll double click on the text layer you'll have the layer style open here going bevel and emboss I want my text to come up not down and I'll fill the value of 3 maybe 150 yeah I think okay this is 3 no 4 and take out the color overlay I don't have color overlay in this the rest of the settings are equally same you can just according to your taste here and hit ok so now most of the things are you know, done here what I will do is I will bring my video shelter logo in the center so go to my folder here track and drop I'll increase the size better because it's quite small hit enter I don't want this text here I just want the logo so make the layer um, rasterize layer use my razor tool here are a number of other ways to remove the, this text from the footer but I find it very easy so, so with Ctrl T I'll try to place in the center by holding shift and alt I'll increase the size and I'll bring it down a bit and I'll be using the same settings which I used in the text holding alt and clicking on the effects icon here and dragging and dropping on the logo layer I have got the same setting. It's not in the center, so I just slide it out. And now I'll take the fill to zero. Now it's all the same, right? It's it's looking pretty cool. So you can always do this thing. I can control hide these effects. By you, know, you can go to shape layer, LA, on uh, custom shapes. And I am just choosing star. You can choose all other shapes as well. There are plenty of shapes you can download as well. So I'll be choosing star by holding shift and alt. I'll make a star here. And sorry, this is a mistake. Control Z. When I want a shape, so I don't want the path mode to be selected here. I'll go back and I'll change it to shape. Again, come to this select star, I'm holding shift and alt. And I'll draw a star. So fill is taken out, so we put a fill of dark grey here. 
I don't know this stroke, so stroke is always zero. By this, you can just manually pick and drag Control J. And I just drag it here, holding Shift, it will be in the alignment. And then controlling both, selecting both, Control J, Control T, and bringing them down. I hit Enter, and move them separately in Control T. One, two, three, holding Shift. One, two, three, four, five. Four, five. Now this is cool. So what I can do is I can select all the stars and drag and drop in my text layer. And then take out the fill. No, you don't have to take out the fill because you have taken out the fill for this entire group. Alright? So because you are putting the thing, uh, the shape layers in the group, so the effect is already applied to the group, so it will be automatically applied to the layers. All right. So now on this note, we should start texturing this uh, gold coin. It's a silver coin here. You might be wanting any other color. Let's say you want a golden color coin here. So what we will do is we'll go to the adjustment panel here, select hue and saturation, adjustment layer, drag it above all I'm sorry all right and first change the uh, blend mode to color and bring out the panel here select colorize and I want my golden texture golden cone sorry increase the saturation orange can take it there are other ways as well I'll just show you right now. this is the basic way without using any of the gradients and stuff and hit OK. And you can use the curves and levels here. You can use curves. Right. Just for the luminosity. So this is the uh, entire process of making the gold coin. There are other ways to uh, color color this entire coin. You can just I will just. Just for the demonstration purpose, I'll delete this adjustment layer here and I'll just take it, delete. Now what I will do is, I'll click on the adjustment panel here, go to gradient map, alright? And I've downloaded a couple of golden gradients here, so I'll just show you, I've just loaded here, you can always go there and you know, load uh, the gradients which you have downloaded from outside, I'll just show how to load the gradients here. So I'll pick any of the random color here. So we'll get the same color in there. This one looks fine. So I'll keep it for the demonstration purpose. Hit OK. And OK. You can always manipulate by going to uh, levels. And just making slight adjustments here. You can brighten it up a bit more. Yeah. Right. So there's a very cool way to load your brushes. It's very easy if you download, if you go on web and you want to download all those, uh, you know, golden gradients, silver gradients, or whatever. All you have to do is select your gradient panel here, double, double click on this or single click, select, and no, it's not happening from here. Okay, Yeah, load gradients. When you click here, you get a panel here and it says load gradients and it will take you to the places. This is the name of the gradient which I have downloaded. Right, you can just see the name and you can copy the exact name and you get the file from you can load and everything will be loaded here. Right, so you can use this thing very easily. So this is the final output. You can always go back and manipulate a color according to your um, priorities or expectations. Thank you so much guys, this was Jay from Video Shelter, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, please do not forget to subscribe, need your support for creating such lovely tutorials. Thank you so much, good night.